God, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be true and bring peace and justice to your world. Amen. Here in MCC, we are an ecumenical church. And ecumenical is just a fancy word for we come from different traditions. So I grew up Methodist. I converted to being a Pentecostal. And then I converted to being MCC, which is many things. So uh, I know some folks out here. I look out some uh, have grew up Presbyterian, Evangelical, Catholic. Episcopalian, I got a bunch of them, and some of us did not grow up within the church, and so some of us here are, oh, and Lutheran, I see, okay, I, I can keep listing them. <laughs> we come from different places, and somehow, by the Spirit of God, we are in the same place, and we are not arguing about doctrine, because within our relationship, we have communion. And I'm not just talking about the sacrament that's here. That's what we call Holy Communion or the Eucharist. Eucharist meaning Thanksgiving. But communion in that we are in community and we have unity without uniformity. We don't have to believe exactly the same things. That wasn't the case in the first through fourth centuries of Christianity. There was a lot of fighting going on, and it was called the Trinitarian Controversy. <laughs> what was it that, uh, the, what was the theology that all should be following in the, in the Christian church, was the question. I will not drag you through four centuries of history, so you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> Um, but there was something called the, I, the uh, Arian Controversy, and it basically was one, one man who was saying that, and he was a bishop, he was saying that uh, Christ and the Holy Spirit were created, they were demigods, they were not part of the Trinity. Um, many of us here did not grow up in Trinitarian churches either, so um, some did not believe that there was a, uh, an eternal triune God. Um, I go back and forth. What I care about is the ethics of my theology. What are the consequences of what I believe and what I preach? And so, uh, for example, if I believe that um, God sends the vast majority of humans into eternal damnation, I see that as an unethical theology. When it comes to Trinitarianism, um, I was telling a few people this week as I kept reading and reading and reading through all of these apologies and, um, and letters from one bishop to the other in the early centuries, it just, it made my head spin. It was like, it, it was like the exorcist, except without the pea soup. <laughs> I just, I, it's not meant, I think, to be fully comprehended. And that is a widely held view within Christianity that it, we're not meant to wrap our mind completely around God. God is not fully knowable. We can't fully explain, explain what divine love is. We feel it. We feel its presence. Just like the scripture says of the spirit, we feel the wind, but we cannot see it. We see the effects of it, but we cannot see it itself. And that is what God is like. Um, I, I could not find a gospel passage um, that adequately talked about the Trinity. And that is because Trinitarian theology came about in the centuries after the scriptures were written. They did not think of it as the Trinity in those early days. They knew the God that they knew through the Hebrew scriptures. The one called Elohim, the one 
called the great I am. And so that was God, the one. And that was it. And everything else was heresy. But as it came along, people saw God in Jesus. And that's why they called him Christ. And that's why they called him Messiah. Both Christ and Messiah just mean anointed one. The one who has been chosen. And so that's what brings us to the theology that I started our service with, saying, I see God in you. Because in my own theology, you don't have to believe exactly as I do, but in my own theology, what I believe and what I preach is that just as Jesus, we are bearers of God's presence within us. We just often don't do it as good as Jesus did. <laughs> I do believe that uh, there are times when Jesus lost his cool. There were times when, uh, well, I mean, one of them was in Scripture where it, it, in the temple he was, he was whipping folks. So <laughs> I don't know how uh, loving that is unless it's consensual. Uh, <laughs> um, that's, a, that's a different sermon. <laughs> but uh, th that, that Christ presence is what the early church fathers called the Logos, or in the Eastern Church called Sophia Wisdom. And so the, in, in uh, uh, there's so many big words, uh, <laughs> in Orthodox Christian theology, um, the Logos, the word, the eternal wisdom is co-eternal with God, and so is spirit, because we remember in the first chapter of Genesis when the spirit of God was moving upon the waters of creation. And so spirit was there too. I'm not going to tell you what to believe about whether there was the same substance within the persons of the Trinity. All I know is that I have experienced personally God in those forms. I know that I have a creator. I, I know that I did not create myself. Um, and I know that my parents are not my creator because, yes, they had some nookie and then I was born, but, <laughs> but they were, did not create themselves either. So we have a creator who um, in traditional, the, uh, traditional Christianity is called Father, but in MCC, we believe that every single person is a reflection of God. And so we include feminine pronouns. We include non-binary pronouns as well. So if you hear me say them or theirs as God, I'm not talking about a plural uh, three gods. I'm talking about one without gender or beyond gender or including all gender. Um, so we have, yes, this first universal mind before anything, and then the presence of Christ in the world, which uh, without a doubt has changed what the world is in good and bad ways. As I watched through reading these texts, seeing how the church was married to the empire, it allowed for Christianity to continue to today, but at the same time, it's the marriage of church and state, which is always a mess. <laughs> always a mess. When, when the government is telling you what to believe, that's never good. That is never good. We can have the presence of spirituality within our dialogue in government, but I never want a president or a senator or anyone to tell me that I need to believe something in order to have my citizenship. That should never, ever, ever be the case. And, and last week we talked about the Holy Spirit as well. And uh, in some churches, nobody talks about the Holy Spirit. It's like, that, that's just, it's just an afterthought. And in other churches, like I talked about last week, I talked extensively about Pentecostalism. Um, and the Holy Spirit is central in that experience. Um, the Spirit is called the Comforter. 
And so uh, she will comfort, but she will also stir you up. When we become stagnant in our relationship with God and our relationship with the world, then Spirit will come in and will kindly wake up, <laughs> awaken, come into a higher consciousness that will not lead to suffering. We look all around us and we see things as we have been taught to see them. But Spirit will whisper in your ear to show you how reality is to God. To show us each other through God's eyes. Which, if we saw each other through God's eyes, it would take our breath away. It certainly would. Um, once again, we have different beliefs. Can't believe it's been a year since I made this uh, this thing here. I'm not gonna hold it up the whole time. I'm not that that I, I've been going to the gym, but um, <laughs> <laughs> so these are just some ways that the triune God is is shown. So the the very traditional Father, Son, Holy Ghost. We have Mother, Child, and Spirit, Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. And I, I've, I've divorced myself from the word redeemer for the most part because I think of coupons and how you just redeem. <laughs> you redeem it for something. And I, I, anyway, I'm not going to go down that line either. Um, St. Augustine, even though he had some terrible theology in my point of view, Augustine was the one who, who uh, really created the doctrine of original sin. And so I want to go back in time and strangle him for that. But... On the other side, he did um, speak of the Trinity as lover, beloved, and the love that binds. And that has come to be one of my very favorite um, ways of talking about the divine. We have ultimate reality as God, all of God's children as the Christ and the Holy Spirit. And then in New thought traditions, we have the thinker, the thought, and the action. So the universal mind that had the thought of the perfect or ideal humanity, and then the action of the spirit. God is also seen as a dance. And uh, I... <laughs> I went by a, a, a particular church yesterday that I will not name, and uh, I, I, I told my partner, I said, um, just, to, just keep your distance from this church. They're, they're not quite friendly. Um, they're, they're considered to be the frozen chosen. <laughs> <laughs> People who think too highly of themselves, thinking that they're the chosen ones and everyone else isn't. Um, and, and I say that uh, to, to, to remind us that we are not frozen in our faith. You, you don't need to um, adhere to church standards of, of being a certain way. I know a lot of us here, like, I, I do believe that like attracts like. And so I think that um, those who have been here who are introverts, attracted more introverts. So I think we have a lot of introverts in our congregation, but when we get together, we, we lean a little more toward the extroverted side, the more comfortable we can become with each other and remember that we are here to be non-judgmental. And so we, we grow in seeing the God in each other. Sometimes you look at someone and you wanna judge just because they're judging you. And then that's where spirit comes in to say there's no need for judgment whatsoever. Um, I hope this hasn't been too heady for you. <laughs> I don't ever want to give a lecture unless you ask for one. But I want to remind us too that uh, we are not alone in the world as uh, a Trinitarian faith. 
There, even uh, across the world, in different religions, there are trinities. There, in Hinduism, there's Brahman and Shiva and, and Krishna. In neo-paganism, there is the crone and the maiden and the mother. <laughs> yes, there's, a, there's, there's three ways of saying it, too. There's a, a matron is the other word for mother, so that's the one I was thinking of. And so the three generations of women in neo-paganism, there's that trinity. There are different ways. There's something about the number three. It's a strong number. Um, even when I go to the grocery store, I find myself going to three or seven. <laughs> they're just, they're numbers for me. I don't know. But the triangle, too, it's strong. It, it wouldn't collapse. You see how the pyramids were, were built as series of triangles. There is something in three. And you do not need to fully comprehend, but I do encourage you to contemplate. Contemplate how you are part of the dance. Even if you can't get up on your feet and dance, our spirits dance. Last, like last week, I, I talked about the, the concept of quickening, how in the Pentecostal tradition there is they talk about quickening, how the spirit is quickened when we hear a word of truth. And so I encourage you to, when you hear truth, recognize that feeling within you that helps you to join in the dance. May it be so, and so it is. Amen.